and welcome back to another episode of HVAC system design tutorial with the channel of the world of building design. So in this tutorial, I would like to show you how to model a building uh, HVAC system uh, in the Carrier Hub software. We are using Carrier Hub version 5.1. And in this tutorial, we would like to model a building uh, with uh, some of the characteristics that we have assumed from before and understand the energy uh, consumption of this uh, building and uh, you know uh, analyze analyze the usage and the consumption so what we have considered for this um, example is a 10 story building and the footprint of the building would be 100 feet by 100 feet and um, in this, uh, in this example, what we have assumed is that every floor we consider to be one zone uh, and is served by one unit, one air handling unit. And um, uh, for the windows, we consider the wall window to wall ratio as 50%. So we assume that 50% of the whole building envelope is covered by the window. Um, the height slab to slab um, height is considered to be 12 feet and the floor to ceiling height of every floor is considered to be 9 feet. And we, con uh, we assume that the occupancy type is a university lecture classroom. So majority of the spaces on all of this 10 story building would be uh, kind of um, educational or university level classroom. Occupancy, occupancy density for one person per 100 square feet is considered for this <coughs> tutorial example. And also, as you can see, we have um, assumed some um, U value or a rate of heat transfer value for wall, roof, and for the windows, which are the major component of our building envelope. So we considered U value of the wall as 0.248 BTU per hour square feet uh, by uh, Fahrenheit. And then the roof U value is 0 0.091 and the window U value as 0.55. The air infiltration, the air coming into the building unwantedly from the building envelope, uh, specifically from windows and doors, we assume to be 0 0.03 air change per hour. Uh, the utility rate, I have, um, I have considered some, uh, something in the local area in, in Toronto, Canada. I have considered the hydro or um, electrical um, rate as 0.156 kilowatt per hour. And the conversion is to term units is here. And then the natural gas is still 0.160 uh, cubic meter per Per consumption of the natural gas. So the air distribution we're considering to be uh, BAV terminal units and uh, they have reheat coil and also the heat system will consider boiler plant and for the cooling system we're considering water cooled chill water system with water side economizer. So we would like to model this uh, you know this scenario um, and uh, assume the with this assumption and do the uh, energy analysis and we'll look at the energy analysis report afterward. So I go to Carrier Hub and start a new wizard. So I'm going to use wizard tab here from the command and then I'm going to go to full wizard. The first thing I do uh, on the weather, I'm going to select my local location here in Canada. I'm going to go to province of Ontario and then I go to Toronto. I'm going to just say OK. And then once I've done that, then I'm going to come to office or on the building. So we're going to determine our characteristic of the building. So as we said, we're looking at a 10 story building. Uh, we look at the options. So for this, I'm just going to put the school for now. Uh, and building subcategory, I'm going to select college, university, and then I'm not changing anything about building identifier. 
the shape rectangular as is so one zone per floor or that's what I keep as you remember we decided to go with 100 by 100 feet number of floors 10th floor we don't consider any basement here floor to floor height 12 floor to ceiling 9 and the window area I'm going to consider that as And um, typical intermediate floor is something we choose because we don't want to show all of the different levels, given that one of the buildings in mid, one of the floors in middle would be typical floor and would be the same as all other floors. I'm just going to go to next. In here, for the ventilation requirement, I'm going to come and select uh, classroom lecture classroom as remember from before so basically this is going to be the basis of all of our occupancy spaces even though this is a high level calculation that we don't we neglect the effect of other type of occupancy within this building such as corridors storage room etc so we don't consider that so uh, we just consider the educational lecture classroom as a major occupancy type so by selecting that um you know carrier half automatically determines the cfm uh, fresh air requirement per person and cfm fresh air per square footage of that type of occupancy which is the basis of the calculation so for the occupancy as you remember we said that we want uh, 100 square feet to be dedicated to each person so i'm going to just change that to 100 and then um, occupancy schedule, school occupancy, activity level, seated at rest, I'll keep it as is. Uh, I'm not going to change anything about the lighting. I keep everything as default. There's no specific lighting I want to add. For the building envelope, as you remember, I'm going to keep the medium wall, uh, weight wall type uh, as 0.248 U value. Uh, for the roof type, uh, just let me go back and refer to to my to my options for the roof type yes i'm going to use 0 0.091 and window 0.55 back here 0.91 and then for the u value i keep it as it is as 0.55 as a double clear type window this can be changed to anything else but for the sake of this tutorial i'm not changing anything and for the infiltration i'm going to change this value 0 0.03 air change per hour as air infiltration. So go finish. Now for the equipment, I'm going to add equipment. So, so for every zone, I'm gonna, gonna use a VAV system. I'm gonna just name VAV. Um, actually for here, I'm gonna use a air handling unit because this is what I'm going to select. So from the drop down menu, I'm going to use, uh, I'm coming to, to this line to see what are the best options here. Um, I'm going to select chill water for air handling units. And for the heating system, I'm going to use hot water. There are other options. I'm going to use hot water because I want to create uh, the boiler plant and the chilled water plant. System VAV reheat. So VAVs would have the reheat coil, as you can see, uh, with this red symbol, reheat coils. And um, for the configuration, we're going to assume that every floor of, of that 10 story building is served by one uh, air handling unit. That's that's one of the options. The other option is one air handling unit per zone. So I'm going to go one air handling unit per um, floor. Okay. Operation schedule as per the as per the uh, school HVAC schedule. I'm not changing that. So for the outdoor air economizer, um, I'm going to use the um integrated drywall 
demand control ventilation used ventilation reclaim i'm going to go with the uh, heat recovery ventilation so there's a heat reclaim ventilation is added here for the indoor fan i'm going to select as a variable speed forward curve fan is something i'm going to select the humidification passive or humidity stat i'm going to change the humidity stat and then humidifier i'm going to just select um, self-contained electric which is an electric type uh, humidifier that is added into the system Gonna go so if you remember we have now VAVs that are serving every zone and uh, we have been serving the air primary air through our air handling unit which is which is uh, containing also the outdoor air and we have the relative humidity sensors here as shown which is evaluating the relative humidity and depending on the return relative humidity, there's more humidity is injected to the supply stream, depending on the, on the condition that you would like to serve the spaces for the relative humidity and temperature. And we have a preheating coil and cooling coil. And then here we have reheat, reheat coil, because if you control the humidity, then you might need to reheat the air to bring the temperature up uh, for the precise uh, humidity control. I'm just gonna go next. For the chiller plant, uh, I'm gonna select two chillers, equally sized um, equipment type. I'm going to go and select um, centrifugal chillers. I'm not changing anything here and I'm going to go with the primary secondary temperature reset control. I'm going to be selecting it with, uh, with the load or reset water temperature. And then for the pump, I'm going to use, uh, for the condenser pump, I'm going to use variable flow because I want to add VFD to this pumps to, to have it variable um, operation. Heat rejection type, of course, cooling tower, fan control, cycling. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go variable speed fan because I want to have also VFD on our cooling tower fan as well. And on the water side economizer, I'm gonna just use a integrated water side economizer okay so that's going to be my chill water system then i'm going to go next so far i what i've done is just have selected the quantity of our uh, chillers and and the configuration of the um, configuration of the system as a whole i have a primary secondary loop here the primary loop as you can see is as shown uh, in here and uh, the secondary loop is here that's taking the chill water to the air handling unit or fan coil unit. So I'm going to go next. For the hot water, I want two boiler equally sized and natural gas. I'm not changing anything. Boiler efficiency, I want to go 95. If I'm going to use, uh, if I'm using the um, this type of boilers that are condensing, you can go up to 95% of efficiency. So I'm selecting 95. Same thing. I want primary, secondary hot water based on the reset by demand. This is not used because we don't want to use this boiler for servicing our domestic hot water usage. So I'm going to go finish so you can see this um, this pumps are the secondary pumps and this line in between are, are decoupling uh, connection or uh, in new design they use um, hydraulic separator in between uh, as opposed to this line 
So uh, this is just a schematic view of how the primary and secondary are separated. And then eventually we have our air handling unit, which takes the hot water. So let's go finish here. Okay, so we have done one of our equipment air handling units. And I'm going to just close this for now and then go to utility. Yeah, for the utility, you can select anything from this from this uh, drop down menu. I'm gonna I'm gonna change that to actually go back to simple, and then for the electric rate, I'm gonna put my number here. Um, which was my assumption. I'll go back to my assumption. So I'm going to use 0.156 kilowatt per hour. I'm not changing anything on the CO2 emission. I'm going to keep this default as it is, where uh, there is 1.67 pound of carbon is generated off of every kilowatt, uh, every kilowatt hours of uh, power generated. So I'm not changing that part. And also for the natural gas. For the natural gas, I'm going to go back to to my assumption. For the natural gas, actually, I'm going to select anything from the from this menu. So I'm going to use the Go to see what are the options here. I'm going to use the US overall average as the price for the natural gas. This is just an example on how we go through uh, and we can uh, input our data ourselves. But for the sake of this, I'm just going to keep that as, as simple as possible. So then I go to finish. So when I press on the finish, as you can see, there are a number of um, condition and criteria has been created. We created the weather condition space. If I go to space, typically it can gives me uh, it can give me the three different uh, spaces. <clears throat> one is the ground floor, and one is the last floor uh, below the roof, and then one of the typical floors, which you see with it's shown as TYP as a typical floor because any floor between the second floor all the way to ninth floor would have the same uh, condition at this level of calculation, which is high level calculation. It's not in precise. We don't consider the solar effect in the orientation of the windows or anything like that. But um, for that purpose, we have three different type of um, occupancy load that is shown in here in the system. Again, uh, we have uh, different different systems here, as you can see. Um, we have to size, you see this is air handling unit for every of those floors. As you can see, you can come and provide the condition to every of those. And they're automatically calculated in a sense that, uh, for example, in the Air system number one in the ALT one, only zone one is dedicated to that unit. So if I go to, okay, starting from beginning, so this is air, um, 
error, error system type is BAV. So if I go to system component, I can look at the condition and see what are the economizer conditions are, what is the ventilation replanes are. So you can, you have to, you know, create a pr proper numbering for every of this. What is the thermal efficiency of our uh, replane system? And for the preheating coil, what is the set point we have, we want to have for the preheat? Uh, so the heating source is hot water, the scheduling is something we have to determine. Uh, coil position upstream of the mixing point or downstream of the mixing point. So this is downstream of the mixing point. So based on the criteria that we uh, laid out for our configuration of the system and the processing we need to consider, we have to uh, precisely determine all of this, including uh, dehumidification, uh, what is the minimum rel relative humidity set point that we want. For the central cooling, also we have to provide our uh, central cooling temperature. What is the supply water temperature here? Sorry, this is the temperature of the air. What is the supply air temperature after the cooling coil? So this is 55 degree as a default. The coil bypass factor. These are the things that we can we can you know fine tune uh, with the uh, manufacturer data and and the process condition for the specific building when it's very well defined. Information about the supply fan. So I don't want to go through all of this, but um, all of this are selected here. So I'm going to do right click here on this first unit and then go to print or view design results. So I'm just going to look what are the options here. Um, so basically for every of this, you can create a you can create a report. So ventilation sizing, I'm gonna select all of this for now just to see what we can see. So go to preview. This is just for the first air handling unit for the first zone. As you can see, the first unit, the first unit has a 25.8 ton cooling load and uh, total cooling load, uh, coil load is 309.5 MBH. Um, we have the sensible load, 1.160. And uh, so obviously we learned from the previous tutorial that sensible load divided by the total load gives you the uh, sensible heat ratio. Or if you, or if you uh, subtract uh, sensible load from your total load, you can get your latent load. Okay. So how much water we need for this system? We need 61.92 GPM of water at 10 degree temperature rise. So if we consider our chilled water temperature is 40 degree, sorry, 45 degree, then your return chill water temperature should be 55 degree to achieve that cooling demand for that zone. What is the sum of our primary peak zone CFM? So you need 9,298 CFM of air to serve that zone alone, which is one floor, first floor, uh, because this is the floor number one. So that's the total air CFM that you would need. Okay, and coming to, these are other parameters that are, that are shown here. Um, yes, I'm coming to other, other aspect of the, the, the calculation just to see what are the other aspects of the calculation we have to look into. So we have the minimum supply air here and design supply air. 
In terms of the ventilation of the system, uh, or what is the minimum fresh air that we need for this system, we need 1,350 CFM of fresh air. And that's simply because we had, uh, we had 10,000 square feet of floor and maximum occupancy per person was, was 100. So the calculation gives you the uncorrected 1,350 CFM of outdoor air, which is calculated here. Um, and then obviously we can look at the, the building envelope load and also our people load. We have 100 people in this floor. So these are the sensible and latent cooling load of the individuals. And the heating load, as you can see, the design heating load under this condition, which is Toronto's uh, worst case scenario uh, cooling condition as per ASHRAE standard or climatic standard. And you can see that uh, the total will be the sum of these two numbers, 201. 582 BTU, BTU per hour plus the 36, 137. So I'm going to continue. And these are all hourly uh, air system design load analysis for the outdoor air temperature and the supply air temperature required and the cooling for sensible and total cooling and uh, for the central heating uh, numbers that are here. And then, so this, this is pretty much a very, um, you know, very detailed reporting system that Carrier Hub provides you for for, for this kind of calculation. And as you can see, that's a July design cooling date. So we'll, let's look at this and see what are that condition. So the condition number one would be your outdoor condition. So this outdoor condition is not is not corrected. We have to we have to see what we have to see that corrected. And then you can see the central cooling coil outlet is at two, number two, which is 55 degree. And then you have um, heat gain from the fan, from the fan motor itself. So the temperature is raised after it cooled to number three, which is the supply fan outlet. And then when this is served to the room, um, you have this number three to four as your cooling process in terms of um, you know what is the what is the uh, heat gain happens uh, as the the cold supply air is moved into the space and then we want to maintain this set point number four or which is the room air condition. And that's the winter design condition that is provided. So we have psychrometric chart uh, provided for that. So we haven't corrected anything on our um, in our design in terms of uh, in terms of our calculation. This was just to show how different system is put in together. So for for the purpose of this tutorial, we wanted to mostly talk about the hot water plant. So if we come to the plant, you can see on the bottom here on the left-hand side, uh, we have created a chill water plant and a hot water plant. So if I come to the hot water plant, so we have a hot water plant here. So I'm gonna go to the second tab. So basically this hot water plant is supposed to uh, serve all of our floors. So it's a, uh, eight floor that we have, which are all typical floor, floors. These are floor two, three, 
4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And this is the 10th floor. So typically, um, all of the floors in between are combined together as one single load, as you can see, because we consider them as similar loads. And floor number one and floor number 10 have more loads, mainly because floor number one uh, is in contact with the ground because it's the building is slab on the ground and it has um, heat gain and heat loss through the floor. And similarly, the floor number 10 has heat loss and heat gain to the roof. So these two roofs, these two uh, levels have a different, uh, different uh, load. That's why they're separated from the typical. So now as we can see all of this air systems are with hot water coil and are part of this load. So I'm gonna go to, uh, for the service hot water, we don't have anything because uh, this is not a service hot water boiler system. For the configuration, I'm gonna keep two boiler equally sized. As you know, we decided this early on during the um, calculation or uh, during the selection of the boiler plant. For the plant control, uh, we want them to do equal unloading, reset by the water temperature return. So design hot water set point, I'm not gonna keep it as 180 because we wanted 95% efficiency. Uh, I'm just gonna keep it as 150, which is a suitable temperature for, for the condensing boilers and 130 as minimum. So I want my uh, 20 degree de delta T temperature is maintained, but at the same time, I want the low, hot, low temperature hot water be served to this facility because I want to take advantage of the uh, condensing uh, condition of the boiler. So we have a hot water supply of 150, hot water return, uh, and uh, hot water return of 130, but we don't want to go lower than, actually, I'm going to change this because if I can go as low as, say, 90 degree, I would do that in a, in a shoulder season or where the outdoor temperature is higher, I can even uh, supply lower temperature to, uh, you know, to, to, through the piping system to my terminal units or air handling units. I'm going to just change that back. But remember that the delta T is 20 degree and the return temperature will be set to 130 degree. And the schedule of equipment, we, we, uh, we have the hot water boilers, two hot water boilers here. <clears throat> so uh, I'm not gonna uh, change anything about, uh, uh, about this configuration, just going back to system, just going back to configuration. Uh, okay, I just wanted to see everything is good here. Okay. Um, okay, I'm not changing anything else in this one. And then on the distribution side, on the distribution side, I want to make some changes to, to here. Uh, coil delta T temperature is 20 degree. That's good. I want to keep it as it is. For uh, pump performance unit, I'm going to just uh, see what are the options. I'm going to change that to fit per water gauge. And uh, I'm not changing the, um, you know, the fluid property because this is a fresh water that is, uh, that is used for creation of the hot water. Um, so I just need to um, look at the pipe heat loss factor. So pipe heat loss factor, you don't, you don't uh, put it in here. You have to calculate uh, based on based on the total um, you know, uh, heat loss from your 
from your piping system. So that's not that's not determined at this level to this to this degree. And um, I'm going to go OK here. For the chill water plant, actually, before I do anything else on the hot water side, I'm going to go to uh, design result and go to preview just to see anything that we have related to, to our boilers. So we have the boilers side as you can see. And the boilers are, I'm going to zoom in here. So maximum plant load is 1,935.5 MBH. Okay. And um, as you can see, the air systems, these are our air system and our system heating coil load. So we have, uh, these are the loads for, for our air handling unit heating coils. Yeah, as you can see, it says air system load is based on uh, coils whose heating source is hot water. So based on that, if you look at the boilers and the heat pump design capacities, we get the total boilers capacities um, as you can see for the two uh, for the two systems. Okay. So I'm going to go back to, to here. On the chill water plant side, we have to see if we have considered, yes, all the systems are in the system configuration. For the configuration, we selected two chillers, and for the design, leaving chill water temperature, we set 44 and 50, uh, 54 as a maximum leaving chill water temperature. And uh, for the free cooling, the type of free cooling integrated heat exchanger is three degree. There's a difference on both sides of heat exchanger. Um, and I'm not changing anything about the cooling tower. For the scheduling, also I'm not changing anything. It shows the scheduling of the equipment, cooler flow rate, condenser flow rate, etc. So at this level, you have high level of um, you know, calculation. It says three GPM per ton. So it's depending on the tonnage that of load we have, you dedicate three GPM of chilled water to it. So we don't do any detailed calculation at this point. On the distribution, something similar happens here, similar to what we saw with the uh, with the uh, heating plant. We don't need to put a lot of data here. I'm going to go to condenser water. Minimum pump flow, 80%. Static head of the pump here, I'm going to just put 100 feet. And just go OK. So the, there are two main, air, main um, you know, heating and cooling source is provided in here. Um, so if I come to boiler, as you can see, if I come on the bottom of the boiler, you see that we have created the boiler system here. Um, and if you go with GPM, based on, based on the boiler size, based on the, um, based on the size that we we calculated, we can understand what is the hot water flow rate or temperature is. 
So in here, I'm going to change this to GPM. And then for the GPM, I'm going to go back to the input here. Actually, I'm going to go look at the input. Um, in the boiler plant, I'm going to go to the boiler plant. I'm just going to look at the result here. Preview. Okay. So if this is if this is my boiler plant capacity, then remember that we have the equation of um, Q or uh, per se the uh, the uh, heat capacity equal to 500 multiplied by temperature difference multiplied by the GPM load of the hot water. So I'm going to use that equation here. So if I have a boiler at 967.7, 967.7, Nine hundred sixty-seven thousand and seven hundred is our um, capacity for one boiler. If I divide this by five hundred, multiplied by twenty, which is the temperature difference uh, for our supply and return water, I get ninety-six point seventy-seven GPM of water for every of these boilers. Okay, so that's what what's uh, required to achieve this heating through the hot water. So I'm going to put uh, a 97, just put it back the, just going to put back the, so sorry about that. I'm doing one more calculation here. 967 700 divided by 500 multiplied by uh, 20. 96.77, I'm going to keep this as 97. I'm going to round that to 100 GPM. So, and when I am in the boiler side, Here, I'm going to put, um, actually, when I do this, 97, because this is a two boilers, let's multiply this by two, 97 by two, 194. I'm going to keep this at 194. GPM. Let me see what is happening here now. One ninety four GPM. Going back to my plant. Just opening. Just opening, just double clicking on this for the hot water. On the configuration side and on the schedule, 194 GPM. That's what we, we added. So the total hot water flow rate would be actually what it has done, it has multiplied it per boiler. So what we're going to do is going to go back and change that to change this from 194 to 97 because it calculates based on individual boilers. So I'm going to just change that and go back now to plant. Double click. Once this opened in the schedule of equipment, so every of those boilers now we have has 97 GPM.
of hot water to achieve the to achieve the total load. Okay, so our total hot water is here as 194. Let me just close this and then go to print view and then do a preview. So now I want to go to the system and just go to a, one of the <clears throat> so this is not condensing boilers. I'm going to just change that to the condensing boilers because we selected the condensing boilers as you remember. And hot water supply, as you remember, we said is 150 degree. Overall efficiency 95, flow rate 97 GPM, and go okay here. Okay, so now I wanna just create, I wanna create some, or I wanna simulate one of these floors so I'm going to come to the floor number one and just go to uh, print or view simulation result for just floor level one. Uh, in here, I would like to uh, zone temperature report and I don't want any of other things to be shown up or any other part or daily simulation. Just going to go preview. This is fairly short report, this called create. This is only for floor one. And okay, let's see what we've got here. For the floor one, we have our central cooling load during the month of April, all the way to month of November. And for the heating coil, we have the same thing here. Um, so we have the coil and also for our terminal unit, we have also the terminal unit load for the heating and also humidifier load input um, and also supply fan. So we have a calculation um, for all of the consumption for air system. And in here, the result for the simulation per month is given in here for the total electrical lighting and the ventilation reclaim device. So we have that information. And then for the zone temperature, maximum zone temperature is in occupied is 76.4. And, um, you know, the other information such as cooling set point or um, the um, hours between one to five degree Fahrenheit above throttling range, uh, this information are, are provided in here. So, so there are quite a very detailed information we can get off of the uh, simulation or energy analysis portion of the um, carrier HAP software. Um, I hope this was helpful. Um, I would like to record other videos uh, with more examples and uh, perhaps uh, you know more practical type of uh, examples that that could be you know, that could be used. Thank you very much for watching. And um, uh, if you haven't subscribed in this channel of the world of building design, please uh, go ahead and subscribe. And uh, I will see you in the next tutorial. Thank you.